Hello everybody, my name is Amardorn and we're doing something a little bit different today. As you can see, we are at my game store, Multiverse Comics and Games, uh, located in Grinnell, Iowa. So today, I would like to make a D&D character. Now, this isn't going to be a 5th edition character. I love pretty much all versions of D&D, except for one, which knows what it did and will remain nameless. So, uh, I, I run a lot of D&D right now, 5th uh, edition mostly. We do a, a couple of campaigns, one that I call Savage Lands, which is very... It, it's a modified version of 5th edition where we are running with a mostly primitive version of humans, very low magic, uh, the players are just now encountering some magic for the first time, uh, everybody's playing human from a from a tribe, and they are starting to encounter other races. They've encountered the the dwarves, the drow, or, or drow, however you want to pronounce it, and um, and now just recently elves. I also play in D and D Adventures League on Wednesday nights here at the store, and I um, I run a Tomb of Annihilation campaign, which is just about ready to wrap up on, on Sundays with a fairly large group. When the Tomb of Annihilation campaign ends, we will be switching to a new campaign that we're going to be doing, um, the Temple of Elemental Evil. But I don't want to run that in 5th edition. I've decided to go a bit old school and switch it up, and we are going to be running in ADD. So today, just to kind of refresh my memory, because it's been years since I've actually played this, I wanted to sit down and actually make a character. So I've got my player's handbook, I have some character sheets, and I have some dice, which we will dump out. Um, looks like I need to go get a couple of more D6s. I'll be right back. Alright, so I've gone and got some more dice. You can never have too many dice. Well, maybe. I know some people who have more dice than they really need. You know who you are. Okay. So, we are going to start from the very beginning. Now, like I said, I haven't done this in a very long time. So, let's get in here and see what our options are. Now, you'll see me use this magnifying glass. I call these my eyeballs. Anybody who comes into the shop on a regular basis will understand. I'm, I need bifocals. They will be coming here next week, actually, on the 22nd of August. And um, then I hopefully will be able to get rid of this. All right, so I've adjusted the camera so you can see my dice tray and the book and my character sheet a little bit. Um, got my pencil and an eraser. Now, there are some options for creating characters. Uh, the book goes through ability descriptions a little bit. Um, and let's see here. Now I know in basic D&D, &D, it's generally roll three dice and put them in order down the line. Um, in 5th edition you have several different options. Um, uh, one of which is using a, a number of array, there's a point by system as, as an option. You can still roll dice. You can roll the th 3d6s and add them together, and those are your scores, like old school. Or you can do what I generally do, and that is roll 4d6s, and then take the highest roll, and then put them in any order you want to, which is what we'll be doing for today. So let's get our six scores. That's not very good. So three, four, five, six, seven. So we have a seven. Um, 
that's better. So there's 11, 12, 13, 14. Hey, we doubled our scores. All right. Now for our next one. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm. This guy could use a little help. Okay, so there's six and four for ten and two more for twelve. Six, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four. We have five scores so far. We need one more. And there we go. Ooh, this is not bad. Not bad at all. So there's fifteen. All right. So our scores are seven, fourteen, nine, twelve, eleven, and fifteen. Now I haven't really thought too much about this character as to what his class and race are going to be. Um, so let's look and see what kind of our options are here. Um, if we used a 7 in strength, um, we wouldn't be able to be a dwarf or a fighter. Um, if we had a 9 for strength, we could do both. But uh, we would not be able to be an assassin or a paladin. We'd also be pretty weak as, as those. For a 15 for strength, um, we'd be able to, let's see, 15 strength is equal to the maximum strength possible for a female gnome character. Now remember, this is old school, so things were a bit different back then. You know, this is from the 70s and, eight, and uh, early 80s. Minimum strength for a monk character is also 15. So there are some possibilities. Uh, if we went with uh, a highs in intelligence, uh, a 15 would uh, be the minimum intelligence uh, required for for an illusionist. Um, I like druids. Um, I play a lot of druids. See, in World of Warcraft, I play a druid. Um, fifth edition, I've got a druid. Um, I've played druid barbarians in fifth edition. Um, I I've always kind of gravitated to that sort of class. Um, Fifteen. Wisdom would be a minimum wisdom for a monk. Uh, 15 intelligence or dexterity would be maximum dexterity. see, minimum dexterity for a monk character. Uh, so let's look at uh, character class limitations by race. Um, and let's see, penalty bonuses. Um, okay. Alright, so character race table ability score minimums and maximums. Alright. So for a dwarf, uh, maximum 18, minimum of 3 for intelligence, minimum of 8 for strength. Constitution 12 and 19. Half elven. Could we do a half elf druid? So it looks like all of our scores hit both the. are, are good for the minimum and maximums for a half elf, so we could definitely be, have possibility of being a half elf. Human, I, there's really no limitations for humans. Uh, what about um, Druid? Now, in AD&D, Druids are a subclass of Cleric, really. Um, Alright, um... A 
adjustments for clerics. Alright. So 9 is the minimum wisdom for a cleric. 12 is the minimum wis wisdom for a druid. Um, so I think we are going to put our 15 in wisdom. And our 14 in constitution. Uh, 12 in strength. 11 in intelligence, 9 in dexterity, and 7 in charisma. So we're going to be a bit grumpy, but we're going to be a decent druid, I think. So those are our starting, starting ability scores. And it looks like we're going to be a druid. Um, what classes can a half elf be a druid? Yes, a half elf can be a druid. So we are going to be a half elf. All right, so we are first level. Um, our, do we have a maximum level for druid on a half elf? Okay, so druids are actually unlimited for uh, druid levels. We can go to whatever we want to. Um, alignment, we need to be neutral. I have not chosen a deity yet, or a place of origin. Now, Temple of Elemental Evil, we're going to be running it in the world of Greyhawk, so we'll, we'll pick a place of origin for this character that's somewhere in Greyhawk. Probably near near the town of Hamlet. I may actually put this guy as an NPC in Hamlet. Um, that's actually not a bad idea. Okay, so our strength is 12. Our what is our hit adjustment percentage? Okay, so our hit probability adjustment. A score of 12 is in for normal. Damage adjustment, also none. Um, damn it. Uh, okay, so we have a bend bars percentage of 4%. So if we're ever stuck in a prison cell on a 4%, we can bend the bars. Hmm. That's right, we don't have any percentage on strength, so... Uh, open stuck doors. So on a 12, we can open a stuck door on a 1 to 2 on a D6. Open locked doors using our strength instead of um, dexterity. Uh, open a locked door. Let's see. Okay, so that's going to be uh, nothing for us. Um, because we are not a fighter, we are a druid. Okay, our intelligence is a 11. All right, so as an 11, we have a minimum, we get a uh, possible number of additional languages, two. Um, and our chance to know a spell is 45%. Minimum number of spells per level. Now, okay, so this is for magic users. This is not for druids, so this really doesn't pertain to us. I'm going to go ahead and write it down on the boxes, just, just to have. Um, 
but it really doesn't mean anything to us. And maximum number of spells for level is 7. Alright, 15 for wisdom. Um, So we're going to get two first and one second level bonus spell. Um, magical attack. Um, chance of spell failure on a 15 is 0%. Uh, magical attack adjustment. 15 plus one. So when we make a, an attack with a magic spell, we get a plus one to our roll. Dexterity, nine. Reaction, attacking, adjustment, uh, zero. And defensive adjustment, zero. So our dexterity is not going to improve our armor class at all. Uh, constitution, constitution is 14. Um, so we have a hit point adjustment of zero, which means we'll just be using our regular, regular hit dice. Um, system shock survival, 88%. And Resurrection Survival, 92%. Uh, max number of Resurrections, um, 6. Number of, let's see, number of Resurrections, okay, so we're at 0. Um, Alright, so we'll need to look, go back and look at uh, max number of resurrections here in a minute. Okay, so charisma is 7. Maximum number of henchmen, uh, 3. Loyalty base, um, minus 10%. So our henchmen are not going to be real loyal to us. In reaction adjustment, uh, minus 10%. So, we may have trouble making friends. I guess I should put my, my name on here. Amra Dorn. That's my player name and not my character name. We haven't decided on our character name yet. All right. Character class limitations. So our constitution score is 14, so that's how the maximum number of resurrections we can have. So right now we have been resurrected zero times. So we can be brought back to, back to life by a cleric 14 times. Um, each time it happens, we have a 92% chance of success and an 8% chance of failure. If we fail, then we're not going to resurrect. Right. So, um, as a druid, let's see, let's find character races. Uh, half elves do not form a race unto themselves, but rather they can be found amongst the elven kind. Okay. Do we have any adjustments to our 
scores for being a half elf. Okay, so half elven can have a 30% uh, resistance to sleep and charm spells. Um, so, 30% versus sleep or charm. Okay, I'll have a, uh, Okay, so we can speak common as a language. Their alignment language, uh, we also know neutral and we don't get any extra languages I don't believe nope yes we do we get two See, all half, half elven characters are able to speak the common tongue of men, their alignment language, and the following Elvish, Gnome, Halfling, Goblin, Hobgoblin, Orcish, and Old. Half elven characters above 16 intelligence are able to learn one additional language for every point of intelligence above 16. Um, our intelligence is 11. So I think we're going to know Elvish and Null. Okay. So there's our starting languages. Um, I don't see any sort of So that's preferences, hit dice, okay, so hit dice for a druid is a d8. Um, so where is our hit dice box? Alright, so for right now I'm going to write that down here. Hit points gained per level. Alright, so we're going to roll a d8 and see what our starting hit points are. Three! And our constitution gives us zero. So we will write a three here, and we have three hit points at first level. That's the hazards of AD&D. You roll for your hit, hit points. Maximum number of hit dice for a druid is 14. Okay. Spell ability. Okay. Class level limit 14. Okay. So level 14 is the highest we can get to as a druid because that is the great druid. Now, there are some special rules with druids as far as moving up at higher levels. Um, there, there's only a certain number of any particular uh, of, of uh, high level druids. And in order to become that level, you have to go find the, the current one and defeat them in battle or, or some sort of contest. Roll the hit dice appropriate to each class the character is professing.
Total the sum of all dice rolled and adjust for constitution. Divide the total by the character's classes, two or three, dropping fractions under one half. Okay. Alright, so druids can wear leather, shield, use a wooden shield, and a club, dagger, dart, hammer, scimitar, sling, spear, and staff. So we're pretty limited on what kind of items we can use. Clerics. Okay, the Druid is a subclass of clerics. They are only absolute neutral. So, um, okay. So we have zero experience points. Where is our experience points? Class. Druid level one. Total experience zero. Our next level will be at 2,000 experience points. Okay, and we are an aspirant as our title. So we are going to write that here. Spells usable by class and level druids. Clerics. Okay, so as a first level druid, we get uh, two first level spells. Okay, so that's a spell book sheet for us. First level spells. Okay. So let's read through the Druid here. Druid is a subclass of clerics. They are the only absolute true neutrals. See alignment. Viewing good and evil, law and chaos as balancing forces of nature, which are necessary for the continuation of all things. As priests of nature, they must have a minimum wisdom score of 12 and a charisma of 15. Whoops. Hmm. So, we might have to make some adjustments here. Alright, so we're going to have to make, change some things up because our charisma has to be a 15 and our wisdom a 12. So, we are going to make our Charisma 15, our score of 7 will go in Strength, unfortunately, and our 12 will go in Constitution. which moves our 14 to Wisdom. So we still have the same scores, we're just doing doing them a little different, which means we're going to have to make some adjustments here. So our Strength is now 7. Um, which means that We have a minus one to our hit probability. Okay. Uh, no damage adjustment. Uh, we will open doors on a one instead of a one and two. Uh, lock doors we're still going to be able to do. And we will not be able to bend bars or lift gates. So our strength is pretty, pretty light. Intelligence. Intelligence is 11. So normal, none, normal. Oh. All right. 
So, we change our intelligence to 11. So we still, still have two. Okay, our wisdom is now 14. Uh, maximum wisdom for half our character. We have a no magical adjustment bonus. So we need to change that from a plus one to a zero. Uh, spell bonus. We hit uh, two first level bonus spells. We will not get any second level spells as a bonus. Alright, so our dex is still a nine. Our constitution is now 12. Okay, so constitution of 12. We have a hit point adjustment of zero still. Um, our system shock survival is 80, and our resurrection survival is 85. And our maximum number of resurrections is now 12 instead of 14. Charisma! Charisma jumped up to 15. So we have a maximum number of seven henchmen. We have a loyalty base of plus 15. So we've gone from a crumpy druid to a happy druid. And reaction adjustment of plus 15%. Right. Uh, we're not going to have any thieving skills. Um, okay, so as a half elf. Okay, so half-elves do not form a race unto themselves, but rather they can be found amongst both elven kind and men. For details of the typical half-elf, see Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Monster Manual under the half heading elf. A character of half-elven race can play as a cleric, maximum level 5, a druid, fighter, maximum level... Okay. Um, half-elven characters have a 30% chance... Okay. Able to speak common... Okay, so we have infravision up this up to 60 feet. Okay, so secret doors are or concealed doors are difficult to hide from half elves, just as they are noticeable by elves. Merely passing within 10 feet of a concealed door gives the old half elven character a one in six chance. I was spotting it. If the character of acti actively seeking discovery of possessed doors has a 2 in 6 chance of spotting a secret door and a 3 in 6 chance of locating a concealed door. Alright, so. Um, let's put that down here in special abilities. Um, Secret doors. Uh, one in six within ten feet. Active. Search. Uh, two in six. And concealed. Active search. Three in six. Okay. So we're pretty good at finding things like that. Alright.
right, let's get back to our class as a druid. All right, it will be no... Okay, so if we had both our wisdom and charisma above 15 or, 15 or higher, then as we gain experience points, we would get a 10% bonus to that experience. We're, we don't hit that mark, so we won't be getting our bonus. So let's go ahead and mark that as a no. Now at some point in the game, we might be able to bump up our, dex our uh, wisdom uh, by what, a point, and then we would be able to start getting our bonus from that point on. All right. It will be noted that spells usable by druids are more attuned to nature and outdoors than are the spells of other clerics or magic users. Nonetheless, druids serve to strengthen, protect, and revitalize as the, cl the usual cleric does. The more powerful druidic spells, as well as their wider range of weaponry, make up for the fact that druids are unable to use any armor or shields other than leather armor and wooden shields. Metallic armor spoils their magical powers. They must speak or read spells aloud. Due to their involvement with living, growing things, druids have no power to, con to turn or control undead, demons, or devils. Druids can be visualized as medieval cousins of what the ancient Celtic sects of druids would have become had they survived the Roman conquest. They hold trees, particularly oak and ash, the sun and the moon, as deities. Mistletoe is the holy symbol of druids, and it gives power to their spells. They have an obligation to protect trees and wild plants, crops, and to a lesser extent their human followers and animals. Thus, druids will never destroy woodlands or crops, no matter what the circumstances. Even though a woods, for example, were evilly hostile, druids would not destroy it, although nothing would prevent them from changing the nature of the place if the desire and wherewithal existed. In similar fashion, they avoid slaying wild animals or even domestic ones except as necessary for self-preservation and sustenance. So, we're not vegetarians, but as a druid, um, we're not going to overhunt an area or uh, thin a herd so far that it can't be self-sustaining. Um, if druids observe any creature destroying their charges, the druids are unlikely to risk their lives to prevent the destruction. Rather, it is probable that druids will seek retribution and revenge at a later date as opportunity presents itself. In connection with their nature worship, druids have certain innate powers which are gained at a higher level. A third level initiate of the first circle, a druid gains the following abilities. Okay, so we get, gain some abilities as we get higher level. Um, druids have their own secret language, so we will speak druidic. combat druids fight as clerics, but they do suffer somewhat from their inability to wear protective armor of metal. They likewise make saving throws as clerics, but against fire and lightning attacks they get a bonus of plus two on their dice rolls. Druids can use those magic items not otherwise pros proscribed, which are, are for all classes and the... Okay. At the upper levels, there are only a limited number of clerics. Okay, so at 12th level, there can only be 9 druids within the world. Um, Alright, so uh, we will get a plus 2. To our saves versus fire. Um, okay, so we're gonna make a note over here. Plus two versus fire and lightning. It's 
spells and attacks. Alright, so what are our saves? Start with 3d6 times 10. Ooh, that's a good roll. So we are going to start with 160 gold. I need to find saving throws. Uh, let's see, is there an index? I believe there is. Uh, maybe. Table of contacts. Establishing the characters. Alright, so here's my Dungeon Master's Guide. You can see this one's been had a lot more wear to it. So let's see, saving throws. Creatures. Alright, alignment. Adventure. Spell casting. Saving throw matrices. Page 79. Attention. Okay, so five. And thirty six, thirty seven, seventy nine. Okay, so Character class and saving throw matrix for characters and human types. Okay, so clerics. Excluding polymorph wand attacks. Alright, so at first level, because we're using the cleric table. Paralysis, poison, or death magic. We have a saving throw of 10. Uh, petrification or polymorph, 13. Rod staff, 1, 14. Um, breath weapon, 16. And spells, 15. Saving throws. Uh, attack matrix for clerics, druids, and monks. Come 
that. Shield type. Um, we haven't done our armor class yet. Of course, we haven't bought our armor yet. Weapon proficiency. Uh, because we're a druid, there's only certain weapons we're allowed to use. So this character sheet doesn't have the Thacko um, chart on it, which is fine. Uh, we may want to use a different character sheet for when we're actually playing. Um, so we've we've made our druid. We've got our ability scores. We have our adjustments and our saving throws. Uh, we just need to really we just need to buy our equipment. Um, so I think we will do that. We also need to pick a DD. We wanna we wanna look through the stuff for Greyhawk and, and find something that's appropriate to, to that. Alright, so let's look at equipment. Starting with armor. Alright, so leather armor is going to be five gold pieces. So we will get some leather armor. And um, we will subtract five gold pieces. So now we have 155. class table. Leather or padded armor gives us an armor class of 8. Our dexterity doesn't change that, so AC base of 8. There's no magic adjustment or condition. Um, so 8 plus that and that is AC base is 8, magic adjustment, other magic adjustment, nope, our, base, our rear armor class is 8, dexterity adjustment, uh, we have no dexterity adjustment, equals shieldless, armor class of 8, we have no shield at the moment, um, I think we're going to skip on a shield for now so our maximum AC is 8 uh, we don't have a helmet So I think I want to, um, let's go back and look at our class again and see what our weapons proficiencies are. Uh, druid, 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 Druid. So, leather armor and wooden shields only. Um,
well as their wider range of weaponry. Okay, so they must be druids have no power to turn dead. This druids will okay. Where I read it off once. eventually be able to make a druid circle. Triple find this again. Druids are proficient in two, and we have a minus four. Um, added proficiency in Let's start your your character will be able to employ a limited number of weapons. The number is determined by class. When the character moves up in levels, they'll experience the next higher. Okay, so... Subclass clerics, they're all absolute neutrals. Okay, it will be noted that the spells usable by druids are more attuned to nature. Serve to strengthen and protect and revitalize the more powerful druidic spells um, as, as well as their wider range of weaponry. Make up for the fact druids are unable to use any other armor or shields other than leather armor and wooden shields, metallic armor, spoils, or magic. They must speak or read spells aloud due to their involvement with living grant and okay. Dreads can be visualized. Uh it gives them power. They have an to pack of trees and more plants. Okay. Uh, 
secrets, have their own secret language. Okay. They gain additional languages by these clerics, but they do suffer somewhat from their inability. Make ways to make students towards the clerics, but against fire. Okay, Dres, can you. No, you know, it's the upper levels, they're only limited, but no. Characters. Druid. Supreme Druid is always attended by nine initiates. Okay. Only a sod or log or stone buildings of a small size. Hmm. Where did I read that? So I know that we can use a scimitar, so we'll go ahead and pick one of that, pick that as a weapon that we will be proficient in, we will purchase one of those. States, but um, what types of weapons we can use? That's under class limitations. Oh, here we go. Armor and weapons per per permitted. Found it. All right, so we can use a club, a dagger, a dart, a hammer, a scimitar, a sling, a spear, and a staff. All right, so I'm always of the school that we want one melee weapon, at least one melee weapon, and at least one ranged weapon. Um, so I'm going to go with uh, Scimitar and Sling as my starting proficient, proficiency items. Okay, so I found that on page 19. Okay, so let's go back to equipment. Alright, so a Sling. Slinging bullets, that's a dozen, will cost us 15 silver pieces. Alright, so 20 silver pieces equals one gold piece. Alright, so we will eliminate one gold piece. So we're at 154. We will have 20 silver, and then we will spend 15 of that silver, leaving us with 5 for a sling and bolts, or bolts, which are basically just things stuff. All right, so we have a scimitar and a sling um, with 20 bolts. All 
right. Leather armor. Scimitar. And sling. 20 sling stones. Alright, so... Sling bullet has an approximate weight in gold pieces. Of two. So we have 20 of those, which gives us 40 um, for our encumbrance. Um, a scimitar is 40 for encumbrance. A sling a sling appears to have no encumbrance. Leather armor. Well, I'm not sure what the encumbrance of leather armor is. Alright, so a scimitar is going to do a 1d8 versus small and medium creatures. Damage. And it will do 1d8 against large creatures. Scimitar has a length of three feet, space required two feet, speed factor of four. Um, our strength gives us a minus one to hit. We have no magic adjustments and um, no damage adjustment. We have a scimitar in hand in one attack. Okay. And a sling bullet. Uh, has a rate of fire of one. Uh, range of five at short. Uh, range 
of 10 at medium and a range of 20 at long. Um, our dexterity is not going to give us any bonus to that. We have no magical bonus uh, adjustments. And our damage, uh, with a sling bullet, is going to be 2 to 5 for small, and 2 to 7. For large. So it looks like um, if we're shooting at a smaller medium creature we're going to roll a 1d4 and add 1 to it. And if we're shooting at a large creature we'll be rolling a d6 and adding 1 to it with our sling. Uh, for our scimitar, we'll just be rolling a d8. Okay. So, uh, spells. Druid spells. Okay, so character spells. The casting of spells, clerical spells, indicated including dramatic are bestowed by the gods. So the clerics need but pray for a few hours. And designed and verbal and semantic spell components are placed properly in the first, second, third, and even fourth level spells are granted in the to the cleric through mediation. Okay. All right, so the spells that are available to us um, are Animal Friendship, Detect Magic, Detect Snares and Pits, Entangle, Fairy Fire, Invisibility to Animals, Locate Animals, Pass Without Trace, Protect Weather, Purify Water, Shlele, and Speak with Animals. Let's read Shalele, because I know what that does in 5th edition. I don't remember exactly what it does in ADD. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've actually played this. So let's see what Shalele does. Just pass it out. Trace. Oh, here we go. Good spells. Spells, second level. Druid spells, first level. Shillelagh. Uh, this spell enables the druid to change his own oaken crudgel into a magical weapon which is plus one to hit and inflicts 2d8 or 2 to 8 hit points of damage on opponents up to man size, 2 to 5 hit points of damage. Larger opponents, the druid must wield the shillelagh, of course. And the material components of the spell are an open club, a mistletoe, and a shamrock leaf. Um, I think with a scimitar, so we're not going to take a shillelagh. We probably try to pick up a staff. What 
would a quarter staff or a yeah a quarter staff one to six I think I'm gonna stick with the scimitar for my druid. going to take the spell Detect Magic. So we want our spells here. Spell. Detect Magic. First level. We'll have that prepared. And then we will also prepare to do fairy fire. Alright. So we basically have our character at this point. Um, there's, there's still a few touches we could do. Uh, finish up equipment, finish up writing in our spells, but um, we have a 7 for strength, an 11 for intelligence, 14 for wisdom, 9 for dex, 12 for constitution, and 15 charisma. Um, there's our saving throws. We're not too bad off. We have leather armor that we're wearing. Our armor class is 8, which means we're going to be easy to hit. So we really want to stay back in a way if we can. We do have a scimitar and we have a sling as our weapons. We only have three hit points at first level. So, um, we want to improve that as, as quickly as possible. Um, we've picked up a little bit of equipment. Um, I would finish out this. We'll do that off camera. Um, I have some gold. I have a decent amount of gold left uh, for equipment. Um, we may see about buying a horse. Um, I've picked only two spells to begin with. Detect Magic and Fairy Fire to start for first level. Um, Druid spells don't seem to be all that useful. You don't really get any healing spells um, to start off with uh, at higher levels. We... Hmm, excuse me. At higher levels, we would have uh, a better chance to have stronger spells. So this is our character. I haven't named him. Um, if you have any suggestions for names, um, Amardorn is a name I use quite frequently, um, both for myself uh, as well as for uh, druids that I play. Uh, I use it in World of Warcraft. Um, so there you have it. There is our AD and D character. He's a half elf druid. All right, so um, my name has been Amardorn. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Uh, we'll try to do this a little bit more often. Uh, I think we'll probably make a, f a fifth edition character here at some point, and. Um, probably be playing some board games in the future. I'm thinking about Pandemic. I'm looking for games that are cooperative in nature. Something to be easy for me to play solo uh, in front of the camera. Um, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, until next time, you guys have a good one. Goodbye.